Hello and welcome to my channel. Thank you for popping in. If you're new, please like and subscribe for me. If you find this content helpful, hit that notification bell so that you don't miss out on the next video. Comment below with any of your questions or topics you'd like me to cover and check out my website, consultingninja.tech. With that out of the way, let's get right to it. We're going to be making a CRUD app using PocketBase and SvelteKit. We'll have one page for every data operation with a corresponding plus page.server that will actually perform the action in PocketBase. For the purposes of this video, I'm going to focus on those interactions between SvelteKit and PocketBase. I'm not gonna get into the markup that creates this UI. The app is gonna have a page for creating, so you can create a record in the collection. We'll have a page for reading the collection and displaying the records. We'll also have a page for updating where you can select a particular record and update the properties on it. And then we'll have one last page where we can select a particular record and delete that from our collection. If this sounds like fun to you, stick around. We're gonna do it right now. So you do have to have PocketBase installed and running, and you also have to have your admin account created in order to do this. If you're not sure how to do that or you just wanna see how it's done, Check the description for a video where I cover all of those details. I'm going to assume that you have PocketBase already going, so we need to sign into the dashboard. I'm gonna recommend that you do this stuff from the dashboard, even though you can create collections and do all of these things through the API, and I'll show you why in just a minute. So create a new collection by clicking the plus new collection button, call it jobs, add two fields, one with a name of job name that will be of type text and another call this one salary and that will be of type number once you have both of those fields in that collection go ahead and click the create button and then you'll have a collection called jobs listed here in your collections if you select that, it will show you all of the records that exist for it and also all of the fields. You'll see that besides job name and salary, we also have an ID and a created and updated field. So with the collection created, let me just point out if you wanna follow along, the source code for this project is available and the link will be in the description. So let's go take a look at our Svelte kit code. I'm not going to cover all of the markup, but I will just point out what we have. We're gonna work through this, one page at a time, just exactly as they're listed. So create, read, update, and destroy. For create, all we have is a form with a couple of required inputs, and we're going to ping an action called create. So inside of the plus page.server, you can use TypeScript or JavaScript, it doesn't matter which. I have an empty actions object here. So let's go ahead and create our create action. I do also have PocketBase already imported, as well as a couple of environment variables that we'll need to make use of, the email address and password of your admin account. We're gonna need those for logging in. So this is going to be an async function. And what we're going to do is we're gonna fire up PocketBase, so const pb equals new PocketBase and that is a function that takes the URL where your pocket base is running. So for us, that's going to be uh, HTTP 127.0.0.1 port 8090. Now we're gonna go ahead and log in using our credentials. So await pb.admins.auth with password and you pass in your email address and your password. After logging in, let's go ahead and get our form data. So const form equals await request.formData. And then we'll pull out our job name using the form.get. And I'm gonna put the nullish coalescing operator on there and give a backup of an empty string just to prevent any errors. And let's grab our salary. Do the same thing. Now let's create our new record object. So you can call this new record. And that's going to have the job name. 
and the salary. So to actually insert this record into the collection, the reason why I said you should leave your dashboard open is because we can use this to see how Pocketbase is wanting us to insert that. So on the top right hand corner, there's this API preview button. If you click that, we have all of the ways to interact with that collection listed right here. So we want to create, so let's click create. And you can see here, it shows you exactly how you would need to do this. The one thing that I will point out is that in the API details section, it says it requires admin authorization token. Now, as long as you log in like we did, then you're good to go. But if you just try to copy and paste this section in there, it won't work because it will say that authorization is required. You have to be an admin. So let's, that's why we're logging in first. And then we're going to go ahead and insert the record by running this command. So you can copy and paste that. Otherwise, we'll just type it out. So const record equals await pb.collection. We're going to select jobs. And then we're going to do a dot create and pass in our new record. So if you save that, now you can go ahead and go to your app and type in something doesn't matter what give, give a new job name here I call this admin with a salary of 50,000 and hit submit and the form clears out we're not doing any sort of fancy feedback here but if you look at your collections and refresh you'll see there is our administrator been created with the salary that we selected so pretty cool there's our create now let's go ahead and look at read so for reading a collection, the markup is really straightforward. All we're doing is uh, we're getting some load data from a plus page dot server, and then we're rendering it out in a list. We're not doing any anything fancy here. So in the plus page dot server, what we need to do is uh, very similar. Actually, we could copy all of the authentication stuff out so we can copy these two lines like that all right so now we want to look at the api preview for what it is wanting us to do in order to list out our items we have a few options here you can get a paginated record records list you can also get all of your records at once uh, using a batch size such as this and that's the way that i'm doing mine uh, get full list so go ahead and copy that one inside of our load function then we want to do a const records equals await pb.collection and again we're selecting jobs dot get full list we want 200 records and then we are going to sort by dash created. And you also can put a filter in here. If you want to, you don't have to. So you would think that you'd be able to just return the records like this, but you can't because a record is not serialized. So if you tried to just return these records like that, you'd get an error because what you return in your load functions needs to be serialized and records are not. So then you would think that you could just do records and do a records dot to string to see them. And if you do this, you'll find something interesting. <laughs> you'll see that uh, we get a whole bunch of undefines. According to the documentation, that's not actually supposed to happen. So I'll probably submit a bug request on that. But what you want to do here in order to access your information is let's create a map let's say call this results or whatever you'd like and do a records dot map and we're going to take each record take each record and inside of brackets do a return an object with job name equal to record 
dot job name and salary equal to record dot salary and then we can do records is equal to results so go ahead and give that a save and now you'll see there is the information we're actually wanting we're wanting our records but we're wanting them in a form that we can actually make use of so that is how you read from a collection let's go on to update so update is also pretty straightforward we actually will be able to make use of what we just wrote inside of the load function for update we're going to render out all of the records with a checkbox if the user selects one then we're going to go ahead and uh, render out this form with all of the information from that record and if you fill out the information and hit submit then we'll actually update that record so inside of the plus page dot server for this one uh, we can actually copy all of this out so the load function is going to return exactly what we needed in the read function for our action we're going to need an update this will also be an async function be sure to put your request in there and we have to be authenticated so we can copy out these two lines again and going back to the create plus page dot server we also can copy out all of this because we're essentially rendering a form if they've selected something that's going to let them modify those those fields so we can paste those in there from our create now in order to update a record we can once again go back to our uh, dashboard and inside of that same panel we can just click update and go look at how pocket base is expecting us to update a record and again it's pretty straightforward you once you're connected to pocket base you take your data and just do a pb dot collection selecting your collection and do a dot update this time you need the record id so we'll add that and then, then you just pass in the data so back in our server file we need to add one other thing here inside of the load function we need to add in the record id so let's add that by doing a comma and saying id equal to record dot id and then in our form we're going to pass that in when our form is submitted we're going to be able to pull that id back out so const id equals form dot get id and now we can just simply run that command that it told us which was and we don't need to do actually you don't actually have to assign this anything you can just do await pb dot collection selecting jobs and doing a dot update and we pass in the id and the new record pretty straightforward let's give that a save and go back to our app and go to update and you can select any one of these you'd like you'll see that um, the markup is rendering out what the current field is and we can just update this with whatever we'd like so let's give it a new job of uh, let's call this garbage man or whatever you'd like and hit submit and then the record is updated and when it renders again you'll see that the page has the new updated record pretty cool stuff so last but not least let's work on destroy so the markup for this is actually going to be uh, pretty much the same as the update we're going to be rendering out all of the fields in a checkbox if you select one we'll have a little bit of conditional rendering that just says delete if they've clicked it once it'll render the same button and this time with an actual action and in our server file we're going to need to do pretty much all of the same stuff that we did for the update so we're going to need to copy and paste all of that from the update plus page.server so you can copy out the entire load function 
that's all going to be identical. We need the ID, so we want to make sure that we have included that in our map when we're creating our results array. And I, I want to point out just briefly here that I'm of the mindset that I always only use the bare minimum that is required to accomplish what it is I need to accomplish. So if I'm importing from a particular library, I'm only importing the pieces I'm actually going to use. When I'm working with data, I only pull out the pieces of data I actually need. And so I'm not returning every single piece of information from that record, such as the created date and the updated date, because I'm not using those in this app. In the function that's generating our read results, you'll notice I didn't include it there because again, I wasn't using it there. That's the mindset I take when I'm developing is always pull in the bare minimum, use the bare minimum that you're actually going to make use of. Don't add extra stuff just because. With our load function pulling in all of the information that we need, we need to create a delete action. So this will also be an async function. We will need to pull out the request here as well. And we can actually go back to the update server file and copy all of this. We're not going to need the object creation because we're not creating an object, we're, we're deleting one. And we're not going to need a job name and salary. All we're going to do is pull out the ID. The ID is going to be in that form. So we're going to pull that out and then once again, go into the dashboard and go into that panel and click delete and it will show you exactly how you need to and it will show you exactly what that command looks like. So this is pretty straightforward, even less than the other actions. So all we need to do here is do an await pb.collection, selecting the collection that you wanna work with, and then just do the dot delete, passing in the ID. Doesn't get any more straightforward than that. Give that a save and go back to our application and go to the destroy page. Now you can select any of your records. It gives you a little bit of the information about what you've selected. And then if you click delete, it just adds, are you sure? And then renders the next button that has the actual action attached to it. So if you click delete, it then goes in and deletes that record from the collection. And there it re-renders just what's left. So there is our CRUD app using Pocketbase and Svelte. I hope that you found this video helpful. If you did, please give a thumbs up. Stay tuned because I'm gonna be doing more pocket base and Svelte content. So stay tuned for that. Take care and as always, have a great day.